Hey friends, welcome to Chemistry Lover and you know biophilic oxidation it is a very common topic for any exams like CSI, NET, GATE or JAM and all of you are familiar with the biophilic oxidation which is basically when you have a ketone for example R, R dash here you have and if you treat it with par acid what you will get? You will get ester right? So this is the biophilic oxidation and you all are familiar with the mechanism of the biophilic oxidation and several examples but in this video i will discuss about three examples of biophilic oxidation which you may not know but for your competitive exams and in general for your organic chemistry knowledge you should know these three reactions and uh, the explanation of their product formation right so for that uh, watch this video so let's start today's topic so as you can see these three examples of biophilic oxidation they are very important and uh, several times it is asked in different competitive exams and the explanation of this question is most important so at first sight they look just normal biophilic oxidation and if you have to tell about the outcome of the product you will say that okay this is the ketone part and the oxidation of this ketone will take place here and you will get a star now what what about the migration so you will tell that the migrating group which is more good or which is better at stabilizing the positive charge that will migrate and in this case it is the tertiary center and in all these three substrate one is the tertiary center and other is a secondary center so one is a tertiary group and other one is the methylene group so the completion is very easy and you will say that in every case you will get this as your product right so you will say this will be your product so uh, where you have methyl group here you will have methyl so in this case you can see here you have hydrogen so here you will have hydrogen and in this case what you will get you will get methyl right so basically you will say that this will be your product uh, same for this okay because both are same and if you say this uh, you are quite logical but in reality the outcome of this reaction is not so simple and in case of this one for where you have two hydrogens over here it is true that you will get this product as 100% and uh, so in 100% case this Bridget position or this tertiary uh, position will migrate but it is not true for this one and this one so in the last case actually you get the completely reverse outcome and you will get this as your major product okay so you can see instead of this tertiary group uh, sorry here you will have this keto so instead of this tertiary group so you will have oxygen over here so instead of this tertiary group this methylene group is migrating so instead of this tertiary group this methylene group is migrating so you get these as 100 percent and none of this isomer but in case of this one where you use the buffer condition so look at the three different reaction conditions for the first case and the last case it is the meta chloroparbenzoic acid in addition uh, h2so4 like this is a strongly acidic condition or you can also use the caros acid which is basically h2so5 so caros acid or meta chloroparbenzoic acid with h2so4 or you can also use trifluoroparacetic acid so it is a strongly acidic condition and in a strongly acidic condition in the first case you get the product of this bridged migration where you have two hydrogens over here but when you replace these two hydrogens by these two methyl group then you get the completely different result and you get the methylene migration to yield this product right now in the second case where you use buffer condition metachloroparbenzoic acid and buffer condition then you will get the mixture of these two 
and here you will have uh, 75% of the start butyl migration product and like 25% of this uh, methylene migration product and this is quite logical right so this one and this one they are quite logical that you are getting uh, the major product where the more substituted group or the electronically uh, more electron donating group is, is migrating but uh, for the third example the result or the outcome is very much confusing and uh, it is so that's why this question is important right now for your competitive exam purpose it is all right if you know these three outcome uh, you don't need to need uh, know the explanation but if you are interested then watch this video uh, till the end because now I am going to explain why you are getting this and let me tell you that before today morning I was also unaware about this outcome and actually uh, someone asked me this question and I was failed to answer because you can see this is uh, totally absurd how uh, a methylene group can migrate in presence of a, a tertiary center right so uh, quite expected that I was uh, unable to answer because I didn't know know it then he told me the right answer but he didn't explain anything actually he didn't have any explanation and uh, let me tell you that you will not get this the explanation of this in any book right so any normal books you will not get the explanation and no teacher will also tell you that because uh, I am now doing PhD so I spent three years in BSc and two years in MSc in IIT right so there uh, so this bioavailable oxidation is taught several times but uh, no one explain this particular uh, question now uh, when I got this question so I was very much curious to know about the explanation and that's why I searched several literature and then I find out this brilliant paper which is uh, the hundred years of the bioavailable oxidation and in this paper this particular thing is perfectly explained so I will put the link of the paper in the description section and I will recommend you all of you to read this paper because this is a very good paper. So now let me explain why you are getting these two different outcome when you are varying uh, just the substitution at this particular position okay. So let me first erase all these things. Now. Now first forget about this buffer case and consider these two where we are using strongly acidic condition okay now in a strongly acidic condition the first thing which is going to happen is the protonation of this center right so protonation of this carbonyl group will happen in the strongly acidic medium and now your par acid will attack on it right so this is the fundamental step right so this is a carbonyl group and it has two phases one is from the bottom and one is from the top same case here one is from the bottom and one is from the top now this bottom phase is the endo phase and the top phase is the exo phase this is with respect to the bulkiness of the group so here you can see this is a four uh, we can say this is a four membered and this is a three membered so three membered it is smaller so it is exo and four member side it is the endo you know the endo exo terminology now when you have two hydrogens over here so quite logically the exo phase is sterically free right so hydrogen will not have any steric repulsion so we can consider that there is no group and our top phase is free so par acid when you employ the par acid uh, we put it R here so par acid will attack from the top phase and it will give you this right so this is your intermediate when you have two hydrogens over here right but the case will be completely different when you have methyl groups here so if you have methyl group here or any group instead of hydrogen then this phase is sterically hindered right so attack will take place from the bottom phase and you will get this so here we will have which and here you will have this group 
right so this is the difference this is the first difference now so here you have methyl now let us consider the two possibilities out of here okay so either so this lone pair will push and either this group can migrate or this group can migrate okay so these are the two possibilities now if you look at this particular thing you can see there is a chair like phase here right so and oxygen is upward so if this particular group this, this methylene group migrates okay so if this methylene group migrates what you will get so you will get this okay so if your methylene group migrates here you will have the keto and these two hydrogens are here here your methyl group so you can see just look at this particular fragment okay here you have oxygen this but if instead the methylene group let's say this tertiary group or this bridged migrates okay so then what you will get so then you will get so let me just erase little bit of this so if this uh, if this bridged migrates so you will get this okay so uh, now you can see this is your oxygen and this is your keto so this now if you look at this particular fragment so here you have two hydrogens here you have the methyl so now look at this fragment okay so this is a chair this is a chair form right so this particular fragment which i just made bold by this chalk this fragment is a chair like form and this goes through a chair like transition state so this is a chair like transition state whereas the previous case when your methylene migrates this is a boat you can see this this particular fragment this looks like a boat and of course the chair transition state will be favored over boat so you will get this tart butyl migration over here right so why you get tart butyl migration in case of hydrogen you understood now so now let us consider the other case when you have two methyl groups instead of two hydrogen atoms here so now you can see uh, the endo adduct you will get and from this endo adduct you will get two different products so first this lone pair will push and now either this methylene can migrate or this bridget so let us first take the case where this methylene will migrate and you can see the orientation of this oxygen so this oxygen is oriented in the bottom side so its orientation is toward the bottom side and if this methylene will migrate so what you will get so you can see if you just follow my steps so i i will suggest you to write down this with me in with pen and paper because otherwise you will not get the point so you can see this is what you will get so here you can see this is the methylene so this is the methylene part here you will have the oxygen and here you will have the keto this is your two methyl groups and this is the another methyl whereas if you have the bridge head migration so if instead the bridge head will migrate so now you can see the bridge head migrates from here to here and although the oxygen is oriented towards the bottom side but when the bridge head will migrate it will go to the top side and what you will get so quite logically you can see so let me just erase here for the clarity and here you will get this okay so this particular shape you will get here you will have methyl two methyls over here now your bridge head is migrating so here you will have the oxygen and here you will have the keto okay so now if i just make it bold what you are getting here so you are getting a chair like form and here you are getting a boat like form right so this is basically a boat so this is a boat 
this is a chair and so it will follow the chair like transition state and so this will be the favored pathway so from this particular uh, starting material when you have two methyl groups for this steric reason you will get the methylene migration instead of uh, bridged migration so this is the explanation right so okay so you understood why in case of these two you get two different products now the, your question will be why we got 75 is to 25 mixture in case of this buffer solution right so for this they proposed a rearrangement mechanism so it is true that we will get this intermediate okay so here we will have this and now we will have this intermediate so the difference here is that in this case instead of OH you will have O minus because in buffer solution you are not using a strong acid so the protonation of this carbonyl will not take place and only the par acid will attack like this and here it will stay as O minus and this particular fragment now can undergo this pericyclic reaction which is basically a sigma tropic rearrangement right so by this sigma tropic rearrangement you can see uh, now which was previously a uh, so this was a endo adduct and now it becomes a exo adduct right so now it becomes a exo adduct and uh, from the endo adduct what you will get so from the endo adduct you will get one isomer and from the exo uh, not, not isomer actually yeah, you, you can say it isomer so from exo at uh, endo adduct you will get one product and from exo adduct you will get another product so the chair board explanation is also valid here the only difference is due to this residual negative charge the sigma tropic rearrangement is possible here but it is not possible for uh, the case when you use a strongly acidic medium so this is the overall explanation i hope that uh, you are able to understand why the difference is there and if you like this video then share this video with your friends and if you're new in this channel then subscribe my channel and thank you for watching